does the video surveillance have any weight at all if it doesn't relate to the type of job that the person does? You know, that's kind of a difficult question to answer. The reason is because what they capture on that video surveillance, it's not necessarily even remotely close sometimes to what your job involves and what your um, general work activities involve. Um, they'll catch you walking, they'll catch you driving your car, they may catch you picking up your kids from school. Do any of those things um, involve the um, material duties of your occupation as a surgeon, as a lawyer, as a police officer? No, generally it does not. But um, I guess what it, what it does capture is just your general activities, your, your general capabilities and, and restrictions and limitations. Let me, let me give you guys some, another example of uh, two recent cases. This was a case against a Prudential Insurance Company where um, the person who was disabled, Prudential denied their claim. This person was a vice president of underwriting for a large insurance company, ironically. Um, she was seen on video engaging in activities such as walking, lifting, and carrying objects without any apparent discomfort on video. And the court basically said that you can't rely on just those activities alone to deny her claim because you, Prudential Insurance Company, never considered how the activities of walking, lifting, and carrying demonstrate how she can perform the duties of her occupation as a vice president of underwriting. Um, in another case, um, there was an executive secretary and they got her on video again doing some kind of shopping or driving her car and they said, well, the video doesn't show anything about how she's able to type or perform the type of hand movements with the frequency required of her own occupation as an executive secretary. So again, walking, lifting something, talking, um, even if she was playing, I don't know, she was playing tennis, it has nothing to do with the fine motor skills required right. for her to do typing. And the unfortunate thing with that, this is once the courts have already gotten a hold of it. So you have to fight, the, you know, who, who knows how long through, you know, if you have to go through an appeal process litigation before a court finally comes to that point. Um, insurance companies will still try to deny the claim regardless of that. You know, there's case law out there, but the insurance companies still work. For instance, uh, if I'm doing an appeal on an ERISA case um, and all of a sudden they have the video surveillance and it says, well, it shows that you can do the do, a, a sedentary level occupation. For instance, we're lawyers. Technically, under the physical requirements, we work a sedentary occupation. But I guarantee you we're not getting paid because we're able to lift a negligible amount of weight from time right. to time. But the insurance company will still say, well, we think that you could sit at your desk all day. You could do this so you can do your job and not take into account that you're getting paid for your ability either in you know, the executive. What the, the mental aspects to be able to concentrate to do the actual, what's putting the money? What's, what's paying you that money? So the insurance companies regardless of this case law, will still look to deny that claim if they get you, you know, on the surveillance and say, well, we think your job was light occupational, light work duties, so we think you can do your job, even though it's really not in any way, shape, or form giving any credit to what the job really was.